Hello, everybody. Welcome to the secret history living in your aquarium. Miriam, Miriam, Miriam. So, I just wanted to let you know that uh, these baby Corydoras in this dirty tank, yes, it's dirty, but you know, they flourish in the dirty tank. They like the dirty tank. They like the algae, the water stains, uh, that has nothing to do with what they like. I'm just a lazy jerk. But, uh, you can see that in here we've got all the little blue shrimpies, and we've also got some baddis. Now, scarlet baddis, they tend to eat little shrimpies, but you can see that there's one, actually two, juvenile shrimp right next to it that it has not eaten yet, so that's a, uh, that's a good sign. Um, but... All these little Corydora that are chilling in here, they need to get a new home. They're going to a new home today. So I am going to catch them, and you can see some of them are bigger than others. But uh, we have a, a local gentleman that wants to trade me some shrimp for some some of these Corydoras, and uh, I'm more than happy to do so. Looks like we're going to get some new red genetics for my line of shrimp. There we go. There's a nice Cory. Uh, these are the Venezuela scories, and uh, an interesting thing about them is they come in a lot of different varieties. Um, there's still debate whether you should call them uh, Corydora Aeneas, uh, and then subspecies Venezuelas, or whether they're their own species, but the adults in this region from Venezuela, rather than the uh, Aeneas that you find in southern Venezuela, as well as uh, the Orinoco Delta, and uh, as well as the Amazon in Brazil, uh, they have a, a different look. They, they have kind of a, a tan look, whereas these guys have a very definitive bright orange and steel gunmetal blue kind of uh, color scheme on them, metallic blue, uh, which I think is really striking. Plus, they have a fin that uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the Corridora, Corydoras hobby we kind of call the hyphen uh, which means that it sticks up a little more prominent and it also has uh, kind of a notch under it like that uh, like you can see on these ones uh, so it, it looks like a boat sail a bit more than some of the others and you can see as they grow up they lose those dots and they get darker now the interesting thing about this fish is you've probably heard of the black Venezuelan Corydoras. as well these are the black Venezuelan Corydoras, and you might be thinking, what gives? Well, they have different patterns for different, um, different stages in their life. And this is common in the fish world. You see it if, with cribs. They have stripes and uh, dots when they're little, and then they have uh, bars on them, kind of. And then they start to get a little color in their belly, and uh, you know they start to change a bit. And uh, one thing that, that leads to this is, is the, the places they live as they get larger when they're little. So the, they initially start out, they hatch, and they're in a sandy, shallow, warm water area during the, the rainy season. Like right as the rainy season starting is when a lot of them hatch. They can hatch other times. There can be multiple hatches a year, and that's great and fine. But the majority of them hatch right before or right during that big uh, change in the climate. And when that happens, they need to be able to hide in silty, kind of mucky, dirty water in the shallows. They need to be able to kind of uh, almost like beach themselves. And so there's no bright colors. They don't need bright colors to, to attract mates or to say, hey, I'm poisonous. They're not. Well, okay, they are poisonous, but in a pretty passive sense. They they have poison glands underneath their uh, their pectoral fins, and if pressed upon, uh, you will get a dose of poison from any Corydora. Uh, if if you look hard enough, you'll see they have little venom sacs. So they're actually not uh, poisonous is not the right term. Venomous is um, the reason I say poisonous is because poison is usually something you have to ingest you have to eat for it to affect you and even though these guys are venomous most species of corydoras with the exception of maybe sturbis um trilineatus and um pandacories uh notably you can pretty much handle them and they're not going to sting you or or uh, spike you 
Whereas if you put them in your mouth and you're another fish uh, or in your hand and close your hand around them tightly, then they will release a cloud of venom and the venom will then get in either your mouth or, or the fish's mouth and, and or any wounds, which can then cause death or paralysis um, and pain. So that's the deal with their, their little um, defense mechanisms. But so you see them here. And they have that defense if they do get chomped on. But these guys are maybe four months old. And some of the ones, like this guy cruising around. Sorry, guys. I know the focus keeps going in and out. But the focus... But So when they're this small, they just need to hide in the shallows in the sandy area. And you see the dots. It's the silt and all the other stuff that, that they're going to be hiding from. Their eyes have more of a metallic uh, circle around them, which lets them bring in more light to their vision field and allows UV light to be reflected off. So they're not blinded, um, even though a lot of them do actually see some UV light, uh, which is really cool uh, evolutionarily. When fish have that ability, many do. And then the other thing is, so they don't have their biggest barbels yet. You see they start to get them. Uh, this one's the one of the four-month-old ones. And you can see that the metallic color around his eyeballs, let's see here, around their eyeballs, has lessened. It's more of a um, kind of, I don't know, golden. And they can blink. They've got another eyelid that's grown in. And that, that spot underneath their um, eyeball, the silvery blue spot, is actually UV light. So it's saying hey, I'm here, and it allows other Corydoras to identify them and say, hey, you're the same species as me. Um, I see you, even through very muddy water. It still reflects UV light carries much differently than visible light rays. And so when you see the Corydora uh, growing into this version in between the two, they kind of have, if we can get it to sit still for long enough, they kind of have spots and some tan, and that's usually to hide in sandy water, but also, um, where are they going to get attacked from? They're going to get either eaten by birds from above or from fish from below. And so they have uh, a very specific uh, silvery pattern that many corridors have from below that reflects light outward. Um, they have kind of this... Uh, belly that has a bit of a pitch to it or I guess a sag would be the the directional correct way to say that and you can see they they, they hide very well on say just a rock or you could say in gravel or mud they would be just fine but then they start to get that orange uh, which gives them a little more wood tone which is where they tend to hang out more as they get older this species is they tr t tend to hang out alongside wood but they also like to shoal so like they're doing now they'll end up hanging out together and swimming up and down up and down uh, doing their thing and hunting and eating I guess foraging is probably better than hunting but as they get older they can get brighter and then show off hey look at me and that's when their markings become more important for uh, mating and, and showing that hey I have a diet that allows my body to process pigment and I can use my excess energy to make that pigment. I don't have to uh, use it to make enough fat just to survive. You know, you see fish when they're stressed out or unhealthy, they lose their color. When you see the very vivid colors, uh, it, it shows along with size and, you know, activity levels, it shows how healthy the fish are. Like this guy is a stud. I mean, he's the same age as everyone in this tank almost. Uh, and yet he's bigger. So the other thing is they stagger out in size and in patterns. There are delayed runts, as they're known, uh, in, in plenty of fish and species of other animals too. But there's plenty of runts that will stay much smaller. And these guys are the same age. We're going to come up here and try to find some. And these guys, much smaller... See how they blend in on that sand pretty well? Um, they stagger them, and that's in case there's one big rainstorm and it washes away all the eggs and they all go downriver and the creeks flood out and, you know, they're, 
It spreads the fish far and wide, which is their reproductive strategy. But also, quarries spawn multiple times whenever they get a big rainfall for several days, and they get a low-pressure area moving overhead, and before high pressure equalizes it out, it usually brings rains with it in the Amazon and around the equator. So these guys hide pretty well, and it's only when they start to get a little bigger that they start to get the more bold markings, and that their eyes change from, I mean, you can see some of them are very small still. Look at this. So they're, they're basically hedging their bets evolutionarily, and this has happened because half of the big, uh, strong uh, alpha males, or whatever you want to call them, alpha females, uh, the ones that, that have stood out are often eaten. Or they go and reproduce, but not enough of them reproduce that that's the only ones. So these guys that are held back, hiding in the mud, in the sand, in the warm, shallow waters... They wait until all the other fish have had their babies, and the babies are all leaving in mass, and they're all getting eaten by all the medium-sized predators and things that are in the water. So they have a really good strategy in that they have got two rounds, even in one hatch of eggs, and that's why you get the staggered sizing in a lot of different fish species, is it's, it's a very good uh, evolutionary strategy, and it w has worked in many species on many continents that have nothing to do with each other evolutionarily, uh, at least for like a billion years, or 350 million. Very dapper looking, and so they are able to then uh, come out in the clearer waters, maybe the shallow waters at night. They get that UV light reflecting on that little cheek, and so it shows, hey, look at the orange pigment I made with beta carotene and omega-3s. And look at all of that. And it, it's, it's really cool to show their health in an outward way. But it's not just size. So some of the females will end up picking the ones that were slower because maybe they're alive longer. Even though they're smaller, they actually make it to the end. They're not as flashy. So you've got the two strategies, either be very flashy, grow quick, and, and go out and strut your stuff, or just relax, take your time, and eventually uh, you'll make it out into the big open river. And uh, then those colors, like I said, show which foods they ate, which alludes to their ability to gather food, as well as their uh, pecking order in a group. So... All interesting stuff and things to consider, you know, that the markings of stripes, or in this case, uh, we, we've got a UV marking, and then we've got uh, UV markings around their eyes. We've got UV, uh, once again, on their peduncle near their tail, which is where their tail uh, fans out. And so underwater, that looks like a little zebra or a little stripe, and the casts shadows that go in all directions, and you lose sight of fish. Uh, in between the plants and reeds that exist in the areas that they spawn. They'll spawn right on rocks and uh, flatter surfaces or in the sand, but when they're feeding and, and mating, a lot of times they'll be in, in uh, more dense foliage like this, if, if they can find it, and then they'll lay those eggs. So it's all part of a plan. you got to be flashy and interesting, but not too flashy and interesting. And we're working in the infrared and in the visible spectrum. Uh, but you don't want to be so noticeable in the infrared that things like eagles or other uh, fish are able to predate on you. So that's just one example from one type of quarry, but it changes in three different ways visually, very noticeably throughout its life. Most of all, oddly enough with these ones, though, is they can randomly turn black. And so you can get this um, melanistic over-melanin, over-pigmentation. It's the same kind of deal as leucistic when you see a fish that actually has very little uh, melanin, which makes it white or albino. Well, it's called leucistic if they don't have... Uh, if they don't have red eyes. If they have red eyes, then that means they truly have no pigment. It's clear. It's not white. It's a clear look that they have. Whereas here, we can see they have, these bettas have blue eyes, so it's leucistic. Well, the same thing, just like these bettas are, are siblings, they can come in lots of different colors. Well, with the Corridor of Venezuela's, 
Some of them uh, are actually going to turn black at about a year old. And so there's different theories about that, but I talked to a fellow named Chris Moore who works at USC Riverside as an ichthyologist, and his theory is that basically uh, the, the water is very dark, nutrient-rich. Um, well, the Amazon is not nutrient-rich, but the, the Orinoco and some of these deltas where they live in have very black, tannin-rich water. And so his theory is once they live past that flashy stage, some of the older fish, males and females, then they move to darker substrates and uh, places like logs and shallow uh, creeks that don't really go anywhere, just kind of little dead-end creeks, and that's where they choose to, to spawn, and then that's where they have these little guys. Um, and that's why you get the black um, colors. And then as well as that, those older ones, they're able to go up that stream or the little creeks, and then that tells them... Uh, evolutionarily that the, there's not as much diversity uh to to widen uh traits to keep different you know orange traits in the higher fin and stuff like that so that's why we have the aeneas typical looking ones the aeneas albino and then we've got the aeneas black which you don't know until they're older and then we've got these orange venezuelan subspecies of aeneas uh, arguably their own species or arguably not even a subspecies, depending on who you ask. Uh, it's being sorted out right now amongst ichthyologists and uh, taxonomists. But I thought I would show you uh, them progressing as I pulled them out of the tank for you guys. And I've got a video on how you can spawn your own Corydoras uh, that was posted a couple weeks ago. So go, go ahead and look back, check that out if you're interested in uh, the hows and the whys. But I just wanted to talk about their markings, camouflage and evolution again. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you're looking out for the science and the wonder going on in your aquariums. And uh, as always, take care of your critters, the people around you, and of course yourself, or you can't do the first two. And uh, I think if we all did that uh, just half the time, uh, I think we'd have a world that is twice as good. All right, guys, if you liked what you heard today, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, hit lots of things. Just don't hit your fish or your head. And, of course, uh, you can subscribe and see what comes out next. You can check out my old videos. And if you're feeling really feisty and you feel like I earned it, I always greatly, greatly support uh, or appreciate the support I receive via Patreon. It's a reliable way, even if it's a dollar or two dollars. It's a nice, reliable way to know um, that I can pay for the electricity or for buying some interesting fish to share, share with you guys, things like that. So thank you again. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. And uh, remember, look for the camouflaged ones. See, these, these guppies have the same markings. It's very interesting that they've got the silver and the orange, and the orange is what guppies always select. Female guppies will always go for orange over any other color when breeding because it shows they had access to beta carotene and carotenoid uh, enzymes, which are hard to find in the regions that they are found. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.